Hey guys, my name's Libby. And I'm an artist. Welcome to my brand spanking new YouTube channel. I've been meaning to start an artist vlog for a really long time now. It feels like the next logical step as, a, as a, an artist in this sort of era, though it does feel really weird. This illustration is a bit spur of the moment and more of a way to prove to myself that I can start a YouTube channel and get my art out to more people. <laughs> the idea for the illustration was something clown themed, specifically some sort of colourful Puro clown, because I really like how those sorts of clowns look. I think it's good to revisit old sketches, especially when poses work quite well. I like to draw my initial sketches with more fun or weird poses just to get an idea of the character's personality. I find this helps to get an idea of the colours for the later on too. I really enjoy this character's pose. They feel really cheerful, maybe they're humming, I don't know, it's fun. To begin any drawing, I think sketching with coloured pencils is both a bad idea and a great one. I can't rub the sketch out, so I have to work with whatever I end up with, which is both freeing and really stupid. You do get really fun added texture in the final illustration though. While recording this part, I realised that my phone would capture the image better in portrait mode, but I don't rotate it until later when I finish the initial sketch. Kind of stupid on my part, so bear with the cropped image. There, much better. And now on to painting. The materials I use in this are the general materials I always prefer to use. Watercolour, then acrylic, obviously the coloured pencils from earlier. I like the watercolours to set a great block of washed colour as a base. And I use washed lightly uh, because <laughs> they're quite bright colours still. The acrylic also helps give the illustrations a bit more texture and variation in the colour. If you're curious about the materials I've used in this painting, I'll be sure to include them in the description, which feels so weird to say. Now, I'm no expert on Puro, but here's a few things I thought were quite cool about them. Puro can be traced back to around the 1540s and were usually always male. He was a character made to portray insecurity and naivety, always downhearted after being rejected by a female character labelled Columbina. He is, by all accounts, a sort of sorrowful jokester. <laughs> My favourite version of Piero is the 17th century, when he was given oversized clothing with puffy sleeves and a large neck ruff. He would normally be dressed in mostly white garments, a stark contrast to his usual rival or friend, the Harlequin. Even while I'm writing this script, I'm finding new things about him. Apparently he committed murder? Oof. I know my clown is a bit bright, a bit too brightly coloured to be a Puro, but what can I say, I am, I am a sucker when it comes to bright colour palettes. Perhaps I will create a clown illustration more in keeping with the Puro's general black and white palette one day, though it will be hard for me. I first kind of was introduced to Puro as a child when my mum would do hairdressing for elderly women. One of her usual customers was this, was this quite stiff old woman, but from what I can remember she was really lovely. She owned these porcelain statues of Puro clowns like a huge collection and I was young at the time really young so I don't remember too much but I don't think she was exactly comfortable with me being around them <laughs> either way I think that's probably where I first started liking Piero my boyfriend's jokingly said in the past that it's the reason I'm the only person in the world who likes clowns <laughs> By this point I've added most of the texture with acrylic paint. 
I think all I need to do now is just paint the face. With this face, I really wanted to go with the simplistic clown makeup since everything else was already so bright and colorful. So I think I go with a white a painted face with rosy little cheeks and a pink little nose. <laughs> A small last minute detail I added were little fluffy balls on the mismatched shoes. Um, it wasn't planned, but I think it kind of suits the character. I couldn't decide at first if I wanted to do a background, but decided to do so again because I can't not do a bright colour palette. I went with oranges and yellows, kind of using colour theory and the colour wheel to balance out the colours. The idea is that colours in threes like this help each other to stand out, or something like that at least. Sort of looking at the painting now, it looks a little bit like she's walking through fire. <laughs> My favourite part in any illustration is adding those final fine line of details to really bring the character to life with expression. Not gonna lie, I got a little distracted watching my own hand draw the lines. Um, I'm just now adding white Posca paint pen to create a bit of a border around the character and add little tiny details to the clothes and such. Just kind of helps the colours pop a bit more. And that's them finished! I'm really happy with how they came out. I'm also really happy with how this video came out too. I think I will try and make more like these in the future. Thanks for watching!